there. You're watching Nightline. I'm Anita Wu. The top stories. Walk-in PPVs for teens to be announced on Tuesday. And more domestic travel bubbles to be opened soon. Our headlining story. The Health Ministry will announce the list of existing vaccination centres, or PPVs, that will accommodate walk-ins for teenagers aged 12 to 17 on Tuesday. Its minister, Kairi Jamaluddin, said teenagers going for vaccination must fill up a consent form and be accompanied by a parent or guardian. There are two rules. There are two rules that are waiting for the school that will become PPV, or uh, boleh pergi ke mana-mana PPV yang, ataupun PPV yang akan dikenal pasti supaya dapat dilaksanakan uh, secara walk-in. Uh, akhir kata saya juga ingin ingatkan bahawa konsen, borang konsen daripada ibu bapa sangat penting uh, untuk diisi dan untuk ditandatangani di depan pengamal perubatan ataupun doktor sebelum uh, mendapat vaksin dan uh, juga selepas uh, menerima vaksin uh, di nasihati kepada penerima vaksin remaja supaya mengelak daripada apa-apa aktiviti kecergasan uh, selama seminggu. He said this at a joint press conference with Senior Education Minister Dr. Dr. Razi Jidin after launching the National COVID-19 Immunization Program for Adolescents in Putrajaya on Monday. He added the implementation of the program was crucial in preparation for the reopening of schools next month and to ensure that the risk of infection in schools could be reduced as well as to prevent the occurrence of clusters and cases among school children. At present, the Health Ministry has approved all states to start their vaccination program for teenagers with a target of inoculating 3.2 million teenagers nationwide. Kari also assured that the supply of COVID-19 vaccines for the booster dose and for adolescents is adequate, adding that the details on the booster shot program would be announced in one or two weeks' time. On plans to vaccinate children below 12 years old, he said several companies have sent clinical trial information for children under 12, but the National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Agency, NPRA, has not approved any vaccine for the age group. Starting 8 a.m. on Tuesday, fully vaccinated Malaysians and foreigners returning from abroad can apply for their home quarantine via a new home quarantine application or the HQA portal. Health Minister Kari Jamaluddin said the portal aims to simplify the process for fully vaccinated returnees as the current application process by sending an email to the ministry's home surveillance order team has caused a backlog of 6,000 applications. Kalau kita guna email, surprise, surprise, there will be a backlog. Yeah? Sekarang ini kita ada backlog sebanyak 6,000 permohonan because it's not, it's done by email. It's done by an email that has to be open individually, has to be processed individually. Sebab itu kalau kita melihat di counter immigration, ada satu laluan untuk mereka yang dah mohon untuk home quarantine tapi tak dapat keputusan lagi, tak dapat jawapan lagi. So terpaksa melalui penilaian risiko di sini. Again, unnecessary. Speaking to reporters after visiting the BP Healthcare COVID-19 Health Screening Centre at Kuala Lumpur International Airport in Sepang, Selangor on Monday, he added travellers arriving in Malaysia from September 28th are required to make an application through the new portal within 7 to 10 days before their arrival. Kairi also stressed that there will be no change in the conditions to undergo mandatory quarantine at home, adding that all the conditions, as previously announced, must be complied with by all travellers arriving in the country. Travellers interested to apply for their home quarantine can do so via the website as shown on screen. In the meantime, private hospitals have offered their assistance to the government in administering COVID-19 booster jabs to high-risk groups. Association of Private Hospitals Malaysia, APHM President Dr. Dr. Kuljit Singh said, Malaysia must make early preparations in case of another global shortage of vaccines. 
In a statement on Monday, Dr. Dr. Kuljit said private hospitals will again assist the health ministry once the guidelines on vaccinating the high-risk groups with booster shots have been released. He added this crucial decision by the government on the third dose was timely as other countries have already started providing booster shots and this may result in another shortage of vaccines globally. He also said early participation of private hospitals and general practitioners will be important to enhance the availability of the third vaccine dose to the selected groups. On Sunday, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the government would administer a third COVID-19 vaccine dose to high-risk groups once the country's vaccination rate surpasses 80% of the adult population. These high-risk groups include healthcare frontliners, immunocompromised individuals, the elderly with comorbidities and those residing and working at long-term healthcare facilities. More domestic travel attractions will be open to the public soon, which will include islands such as Pula Redang and Pula Panko, as well as highlands like Cameron Highlands and Genting Highlands. Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Datuk Sri Nancy Shukri told the Dewan Rakyat on Monday that this was part of the government's efforts to revive the tourism sector that had been badly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Hotel, hotel ataupun tempat destinasi 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 sama ada pulau ataupun mainland mereka dibenarkan membuka penama destinasi mereka bukan untuk orang luar daripada negeri ianya hanya interested namun begitu insyaallah kita akan berbincang dalam dua hari dua tiga hari ini untuk membuka interested bila interested itu dibuka maka orang luar boleh masuk juga dia kita telah apa nama senaraikan okay, we have listed down nama-nama destinasi destinasi bukan saja pulau yang berhormat menteri sangat prihatin Tajit Sri Nancy said this in response to a supplementary question from Moa Member of Parliament, Syed Sadiq Syed Abdul Rahman, who asked the government to open up more domestic travel bubbles and to not only focus on resort islands to assist industry players affected by COVID-19. On plans to open Langkawi to international tourists, she said the matter was being discussed with relevant agencies, adding that the resort island has been set as a benchmark before deciding on reopening the country's borders. She also said if Langkawi turns out to be a successful pilot project, the government will start, allowing, will start to allow interstate travel as many states have moved into phase four of the National Recovery Plan. The ministry had also established the Tourism Recovery Plan, TRP, to restore tourist confidence on safety and ensuring tourism industry players were able to generate a permanent income after the sector's reopening in stages. The possible expansion of the country's tourism bubble and relaxation of other restrictions in the sports sector will be deliberated upon at the COVID-19 Quartet Ministers' meeting on Tuesday. Senior Defence Minister Datuk Sri Shamuddin Tun Hussein said, Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Datuk Sri Nancy Shukri, as well as Youth and Sports Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Faisal Azumu, have been invited to join the meeting to brief the Quartet Ministers. Kementerian Pelancongan akan um, maklumkan kepada kami status terkini projek Perintis Travel Bubble Langkawi dan potensi gelombong pelancongan yang lain. Manakala Kementerian Belia dan Sukan akan memberi taklimat mengenai potensi kelonggaran kelonggaran lain dalam sektor sukan. Speaking in a joint media conference with Senior Education Minister Datuk Dr. Razi Jidin, after visiting the back-to-school vaccination programme at Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Desa Tun Hussein on in Kuala Lumpur, he added the Quartet Minister's meeting will also focus on the narrative of gearing towards the endemic phase, which will begin at the end of October. Datuk Sri Hishamuddin said that Dr. Razi is expected to brief on the implementation of vaccinations for students as well as the latest developments on the reopening of schools at next week's Quartet Ministers' meeting. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Hishamuddin also said the permission for interstate travel is not part of the trimmed standard operating procedure, SOP of the National Recovery Plan. He explained that the decision on matters related to interstate travel will be scrutinised by the Special Committee on Pandemic Management, chaired by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabriyakob. Tapi sure ya, 
um, datang daripada menteri-menteri yang memimpin dan bertanggungjawab kepada sektor-sektor uh, tertentu untuk dipertimbangkan di peringkat jawatan kuasa teknikal, di peringkat jawatan kuasa menteri kuartet dari uh, untuk dipanjangkan dan dibincangkan uh, di peringkat lebih tinggi yang dipersiapkan oleh Perdana Menteri. He added the meeting will focus on efforts to simplify the current 181 COVID-19 SOPs to only 10 so that it is easily understood by the public. Aside from Datuk Sri Shamuddin, the Quartet Minister's meeting would also be attended by Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa, Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin and Finance Minister Datuk Sri Tengku Zafrul Abdul Aziz. Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has called for the Attorney General, AG and the powers that come with the position to be reviewed to prevent injustices and to ensure fairness. Speaking in the Dewan Rakyat on Monday, the Langkawi MP said the AG must not have both the powers to prosecute and determine if a case is dismissible. Kita lihat bagaimana satu orang yang mempunyai 46 kes telah terlepas daripada dari semua 46 kes ini dengan dinyatakan di, oleh Attorney General bahawa tidak ada kes untuk dia hanya menjawab. Sebaliknya ada satu Attorney General dahulu yang menyatakan bahawa Perdana Menteri pada ketika itu tidak melakukan apa-apa kesalahan tetapi selepas dia hanya tidak jadi Perdana Menteri Apabila dibawa di ke mahkamah dia didapati bersalah dan dihukum. Ini menunjuk bahawa jawatan Attorney General ini perlu disemak semula supaya kita asingkan peranannya dan dia tidak menjadi hakim dan juga pendakwa raya. The former Prime Minister added that the AG should be limited to only be the prosecutor and not have the power to determine whether or not there is a case against a person. Last week, former Dewan Rakyat Deputy Speaker Datuk Sri Azalina Othman also urged the government to separate the powers of the AG and that of a public prosecutor. According to her, the AG and the public prosecutor cannot be the same person to ensure transparency and to avoid the perception that the AG is experiencing political pressure at any time. Right after this short break, 50 million ringgit drug processing chemicals seized. Stay with us for the details. Don't go away. Semua ejen dah pekat Iris Mata perlukan saya lagi ke? Semua rimau aku serai Aku masih boleh tenang Kalau nampak jangan jengar Kalau kacau pendang kami nanti dengar gendang perang Lepas lawan yang di sini lawan yang sebelah Kita jaga kita Welcome back. Still on Nightline. Police have arrested seven individuals suspected of being involved in the syndicate, distributing 4.87 kilograms of cocaine and seizing 174 sacks containing drug processing chemicals estimated to be worth over 50 million ringgit. 
Brigade Amman Narcotics Crime Investigation Department NCID Director Datuk Razaruddin Hussein on Monday said the suspects, five men and two women, were arrested around Selangor from September 10th to 16th. Uh, rampasan ini adalah hasil daripada tujuh serbuan dengan tujuh tangkapan uh, iaitu satu lelaki tempatan, satu perempuan tempatan, satu perempuan warga negara asing dan juga empat lelaki-lelaki warga negara asing yang berumur di antara 27 sehingga 57 tahun. Riman mereka ini sehingga 24 hari bulan uh, 9 ini. Datuk Razaruddin added the drugs seized were believed to be meant for local distribution as well as for the foreign market, such as Qatar and Hong Kong. Initial investigations revealed the syndicate has been active for more than six months with buyers from within and outside the country, while the chemicals found in the sacks could be used to make shabu and MDMA. All the suspects had no criminal records, while the urine tests carried out found one of them to be positive for drugs. Police also seized several vehicles, a sum of cash and watches, totaling an estimated 1.22 million ringgit. The case is being investigated under the Dangerous Drugs Act. Police are seeking the extradition of cosmetics entrepreneur Muhammad Sajjad Kamarul Zaman, who was arrested by authorities in Thailand recently. In a statement on Monday, Bukit Aman Criminal Investigation Department Director Datuk Sri Abdul Jalil Hassan said the suspect was sought by the Malaysian authorities under Section 186 and 353 of the Penal Code for obstructing a public servant from carrying out his duties and using criminal force on a public servant. However, the extradition application would take time as it also involves multiple agencies in Malaysia, including the Attorney General's chambers. Muhammad Sajjad, or better known as Nur Sajjad, was detained by Thai immigration on September 8th for possession of an invalid passport before he was charged and fined for the offence in a Thai court the following day. It was reported that the suspect fled Malaysia and had been hiding in Thailand after an arrest warrant was issued against him by the Shah Alam Sharia High Court on February 23rd for failing to attend proceedings over a charge of dressing as a woman. He was also wanted by police to attend court proceedings over a fraud case involving my card details. <laughs> Moving on, the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, has confirmed that three of its senior officers had been detained over abuse of power and misconduct allegations in connection to a case involving the Commission's former head of department. All three individuals have been issued a six-day remand order by the Putrajaya Magistrates' Court until September 19th to assist investigations into the case. In a statement on Monday, the Graftbuster said it is conducting a thorough probe and hopes that all quarters will not speculate on the matter as it would affect the investigation. The statement also added that the MACC will not compromise or protect any of its officers involved in any criminal act and will take appropriate action if found to be true. <laughs> Over in Slango, a marketing officer who was arrested for driving against traffic flow and causing an accident that killed two teenagers earlier this month was charged at the Shala Magistrates Court for murder. No plea was recorded from 24-year-old K. Deva Asvin when the charge was read to him before Magistrate Nur Faiza Abdul Sani, who said October 21st for re-mention of the case. Deva Asvin is accused of killing Noor Afika Abdul Karim and Muhammad Hafiz Shamir Zul Asri, aged 18 and 19 respectively, in a head-on collision involving a Mitsubishi Triton driven by the accused and the victim's Proton Wira along the Federal Highway on September 12th. The charge, framed under the Penal Code, carries a death penalty upon conviction. Up next after this break, gunman goes on shooting spree at Russian University. This and more when we return. Stay tuned.
Kalau semua ejen dah pekat Iris, mata perlukan saya lagi ke? Semua rimau aku serai. Aku masih boleh tenang. Kalau nampak jangan jangan kalau kacau pendang kami nanti dengar gendang perang lepas lawan yang di sini lawan yang seberang. Kita jaga kita. We're back with news on the foreign front. France's Defence Minister Florence Barley has cancelled talks with her United Kingdom counterpart amid a row prompted by a new security deal between Britain, the United States and Australia. According to officials, the two days of talks between Parley and UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace have been due to take place in London this week. The cancellation of the meeting was confirmed by former British Ambassador to France, Lord Ricketts, who was due to co-chair the talks. It is understood that Paris is angry after Australia signed the AUKUS pact to build nuclear-powered submarines, pulling out of a major contract with France in the process. Foreign Office Minister James Cleverley, meanwhile, was confident that Britain would resolve any friction with France, a long-standing defence ally. Australia has also defended its decision to scrap the 2016 deal with France in favour of the AUKUS pact, saying it had made clear to Paris for months its concerns over the contract for 12 conventionally powered submarines. Russia's opposition accused the authorities of mass voter fraud, as election results on Monday showed the ruling United Russia Party winning a sweeping majority in Parliament. The party claimed victory a few hours after polls closed on Sunday evening. The three-day vote came with pre-election polls showing United Russia's popularity at a historic low, but the party still claimed a two-thirds majority in the lower house state Duma, with the party's Andrei Turchuk saying it was a convincing and clean victory. He told reporters the party had taken 120 seats from the party list and 195 single-mandate seats, a total of 315 seats from 450. It was a drop from the 334 seats United Russia had held before the election, but still enough for the party to enact major legislation, including changes to the constitution. With 95% of votes counted by Monday, United Russia was ahead with nearly 50% of the vote, followed by the Communist Party with about 20%. The vote was held in the wake of a crackdown on the opposition and independent media that saw Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny jailed and his organizations banned. There have also been numerous allegations of ballot stuffing and forced voting. But Russia's Electoral Commission rejected claims of widespread irregularities. Also in Russia, a student opened fire on a university in the city of Perm on Monday, killing at least six people and wounding several others before being detained by police. This is the country's second mass shooting this year that targeted students. Local media identified the gunman as an 18-year-old student, Timur Bekmansurov, who had earlier posted a social media photo of himself posing with a rifle, helmet and ammunition. According to the university, about 3,000 people were on campus at the time of the shooting. Terrified students were seen jumping from windows as the 18-year-old went on a rampage at the Perm State University. His attack came to an end when he was shot by police for resisting arrest. He is now being treated for his wounds at the hospital and authorities have opened a criminal murder case following the attack. In other news, authorities in Spain's Atlantic Ocean island of La Palma have evacuated at least 5,000 people after Cumbre Vieja volcano erupted on Sunday, with lava flows destroying isolated houses and threatening to reach the coast. The Canary Islands Volcanology Volcanology Institute reported the initial eruption shortly after 3 p.m. local time near the southern end of the island, which saw its last eruption in 1971. According to Mayor Sergio Rodriguez, at least 20 houses had been buried by the lava in one village. As of Monday, mandatory evacuation had been issued for four villages, including El Paso and Los Llanos de Aridane, and temporary shelters were also set up. No casualties have so far been reported.
Coming up next, action from the German Bundesliga. Stay tuned. Semua ejen dah pekat Iris. Mata perlukan saya lagi ke? Semua rimau aku serai. Aku masih boleh tenang. Kalau nampak jangan jangan kalau kacau benang kami nanti dengar gendang perang lepas lawan yang di sini lawan yang seberang. Kita jaga kita. We're back with sports news now, football, the German Bundesliga. Star forward Erling Haaland struck twice as Borussia Dortmund beat Union Berlin 4-2 to move within a point behind league leaders by Munich and Wolfsburg. Rafael Guerrero opened the scoring in the 10th minute when the Portuguese unleashed a volley into the top corner for a 1-0 lead. Dortmund then went 2-0 up in the 24th minute thanks to a thumping header from Haaland following a cross from Thomas Meunier. Things went from bad to worse for the visitors after Marvin Friedrich accidentally turned Marco Royce's cross into his own goal in the 52nd minute, bringing the score 3-0. Berlin pulled one back through Max Kruse's spot kick in the 57th minute to make it 2-1, before Andreas Volksamer headed in Nico Gieselmann's corner in the 81st minute to make it 3-2. Any hope of comeback for the visitors were dashed when Holland completed his brace in the 83rd minute for a 4-2 final scoreline. With the win, Dortmund moves to third in the league standings with 12 points, while Berlin slipped to eight with six points after five matches. Elsewhere, Wolfsburg missed the opportunity to stretch their lead at the top of the league standings after they were held to a one-all draw by Eintracht Frankfurt. Sam Lemmers put Frankfurt ahead in the 38th minute when he volleyed in Philippe Kostic's low cross past Wolfsburg goalkeeper Korn Castells. Bort Vigorst, however, levelled matters for the hosts in the 70th minute as he was the quickest to react, following a save from Frankfurt goalkeeper Kevin Trapp. Lukas Amirchia headed home from close range to give Wolfsburg a 2-1 lead in stoppage time, but it was, however, ruled out by the referee for offside. One all the final scoreline, and following the draw, Mark von Bommel's side are in second place, level on 13 points with leaders Bayern Munich after five league matches of the season.
One of Italy's most popular parades, the Viareggio Carnival, has returned to the city after being postponed due to COVID-19. Tackling themes including the pandemic, the floats this year highlight issues such as deforestation in Brazil and racial injustice in the US. Let's have a look. With that, I'm Manita Wu. Thank you for tuning in and be well, Malaysia.